Hey everyone, it is Kat. I'm Amber. And we are Wandering Soup, and today we are sharing a um, conversation. Once between us, we figured we'd share it with you. And it's about different things that um, occur to us. Um, due to us moving abroad. Uh, we've been traveling for a year. Yep. It'll be a year, June 4th. We got on that plane to travel to Singapore. And from there to Malaysia. And from there finally landing in Cambodia. And it's been a fantastic journey. We are currently in Hanoi, Vietnam. And uh, we just wanted to share some of the information and the knowledge, really, that we've learned in this year of traveling. And what led us up to traveling as well, which is really important. Because once you get there, you're there. But to get there, there's a lot of lot of steps. It's a journey in itself. It is truly a journey. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to start out with is um, one of the first things we did uh, when we were thinking about moving abroad. Uh, and mind you, this was probably about a year, maybe nine months prior to us actually jumping. And there was different reasons for us jumping. Uh, job, um, burnout, and we were just like, why are we, we had put, we really had planned on moving actually in 2020, but we ended up bumping it up to 2019, uh, just because life, life said go ahead on and fly, and thankfully we did, because if we had right. moved, this would have been the time frame that we had actually, were originally going to move, and obviously wow. with corona, we wow. wouldn't have been able to do it. That's true. So, you know, there were signals, and uh, we listened to them. We received them. Um, so anyway, back to our conversation today, which is first steps for moving abroad from the U.S. Right. First steps that we looked at and first things that we did and the research that we did. Do your own research always and update everything because it, it changes at the drop of a dime. Some things do, depending on the country. But anyway, one of the first places that we went to for information was Facebook groups. Lots and lots of Facebook groups. Okay. And we joined every expat uh, group in Cambodia that, that we could find in Facebook. Uh, expat groups in other countries that we were interested in, which was Thailand, uh, Vietnam, which we're, again, currently living in, uh, Malaysia. And what you, the reason why we say expat groups is because you really get a feel of how people from other countries have adjusted to life. And... You get reality. Um, the, some of the blogs that you read, to me, I don't know about Amber, but to me, they were really biased um, to backpackers. Really cheap living, people under 30 who, you know, live out of their backpacks, can survive on, you know, $200 a month. I, I don't live like that. I don't want to live like that. So I need people who have kids who are over 30, right. who have a job, and they're paying bills, you know, and they're moving with obligations. So that was the information that I found in most of the Facebook groups. How about you? Yeah, I think that's the reason why I do like the groups, because I'm not a big, honestly, I can do without Facebook in general, but the groups, though, because there's so many different opinions, right. that's what I like. I mean, the fact you're not just hearing from one person, you're hearing from... A bunch of different people and sometimes those opinions will gel and you're like that's it you know that's that's what I need to know mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you need to hear that one you know that one voice that is dissenting voice too right. and it's like oh see everybody else didn't say that I didn't right. know that so yeah the groups are what's up right oh yeah and that, that dissenting voice that you mentioned is mm -hmm. really key yeah because they'll mention that one thing that everybody else is sort of glossed over they've gotten used to it but it may be a major factor for you right um, and it may be something you didn't even think about, but you know, you, you're going to be that, you may be that one dissenting voice in the group once you arrive there, you know what I'm saying? And that's cool. Always be truthful. If you do post in the group, ask really good questions, do research. Um, I mean, just read the post, man. They're so truthful. They're, the countries look really good on paper, but then you get into the everyday living and then you find that, you know, you can't walk down certain streets. Uh, you get robbed, you know, people breaking into your homes, right. um, there's bribery and things like that. Thing. And you just things you need to know. Yeah. And some people, and and it's good too, because you, sometimes you can actually connect with people mm -hmm. before you get somewhere. That's why it's good to contribute to the group and to be honest and to be, 
you know, just to follow the rules, you know, do the right thing because right. you can actually make a friend and then that person may actually be there for you when you get to that country looking out for you. Like I met someone before we got to Cambodia, I met someone there online um, in a group mm-hmm. and that person was really helpful even after we got to Cambodia. As a matter of fact, we had a whole drama that she did write about with our stuff, we thought our stuff was stolen, or it was in essence, and we had not long gotten to Cambodia, and I reached out to that person, you know, like, hey, what do we do in this situation, and he was like calling, you know, places, and trying to help, and saying, you know, just go to the police, do this, do that, and it was really helpful, so just, you know, an example of how Facebook groups make a difference, if you do the right thing when you're in them, right, yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, yeah, the Cambodian thing. Well, I know, right? We'll reference that another time, Sorry. so you can understand what really happened. <laughs> and it's a whole bunch of things that led to that. But anyway, next thing up was money. Do you have money to move? All of the blogs that we read said that Cambodia was hella cheap. Oh my God, it's so cheap. It's, so, it's not. It's not as cheap as everybody says it is. It's actually probably one of the more expensive countries in Southeast Asia if you want to live like a Westerner. Which most people do when they first move because it's comfortable. Am I right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So with that being said, it's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. It's inexpensive. But it's not like, oh my God, I'm going to pay $100 and I'm going to live like a king. You're not. But some people would say, oh, if you're paying $700 for your rent, that's pretty darn expensive. Like your rent plus you. Somebody would say, that is that is cheap. That is That's pretty cheap. Right. But. The gauge that you're going by is most of the bloggers are saying you can live in Cambodia for two hundred dollars. Right. Well, and those mostly are white guys, no kids, backpackers. They're quite comfortable living in a one room, no kitchen, possibly a bathroom, possibly not. And that's it. That's not my life. I have a kid, I have a wife, I need some space. I need a bathroom that he doesn't visit. And everybody needs their own bedroom. And we need workspace because we do work from home. So you're going to have to pay for those things. So, money, job. Will you have a job? Are you going to be digital? Or are you going to get a local job? If you're going to get a local job, is that teaching? If so, make sure it's, your contracts are all good, your visas are, are good, everything's worked out before you land. So that you don't have any issues and stress because it can be very stressful. But also live within your means. If you're getting a a teacher salary, depending on the country, some of them are really good, some of them are not that great. Depends on your your, um, education level, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Or your certificates and things like that. So that's going to determine how much money you make. And that's going to determine how you're going to live. So keep those thoughts in mind that most of us coming across... Again, unless you're single and you're living, used to, or wanting to live in a room, you're going to pay a little bit more than what is advertised out there. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's just much more. That's all I'm going to say. What do you say? Um, yeah, but on top of that, I still think that, you know, $700 a month is pretty damn, pretty damn nice. For but rent, if you're only making $1,200, it's not nice. Well, you have no, because you don't have a savings plan. You don't have money to get back home in okay, case something happened like this Corona thing. I get that, but right. I'm saying someone who's someone who's doing that is maybe likely, like you said, living in a place where they're sharing, sharing in a house. And it should be seven hundred. Living in a room. No, no. Then it's going to be much Cheaper. less than that. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. So, so you're going to have to live according to your means. Right. The apartments that you see online and you advertise are really, really nice. Most of those are not going to be available. If they are, they're gonna be much. They're gonna be outside of your price. Yeah, point. those are right. They are. They're they're just you know they're they're flies. I mean they're honey to get the flies in, and that you are the fly, and then they're gonna switch and bait and all this stuff like that. So just be cognizant is what we're saying. Mm-hmm. Have a plan. You know, um, some people or some of the blogs say you can move with a thousand dollars in your pocket. Do not do that. And I say that because I want you to succeed. Mm-hmm. You will blow through money so quickly because, A, you don't know the exchange rate. You're out there. You're shopping. You have to buy extra stuff. Things that you didn't even think about in the States. Like, they don't do hand towels, you know. Soap is not cheap. Uh, Food, if you go to the regular Western-style grocery stores, which you recognize, it's going to be expensive. Unless you want to go to the mom and pops 
or to the farmer market like grocery stores where everything's outside. Yeah, you can get it cheap there. Most people don't want to do that though mm -hmm. because they're wary of the dirt, the bugs, the grime, and things like that. So you want to go to the pretty packaged Western store. They're going to charge you three times the cost for that. You may end up needing to get another phone. Right. When you get there, I mean, you're, you're automatically going to get a SIM card, obviously. But you, then you may end up needing to get a phone, a new phone, because the phone you had, you can't use for that SIM card. And we learned that if we got here. Um, right. All of us cannot um, transfer and use our phone mm -hmm. with the local SIM card. So just things like that that you're not necessarily expecting, like she said, expenses that can pop up. So you do have to have something ready for when you get there. But yeah. also... Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, what are you going to do? No, I was going to speak another speak on jobs. I was just going to mention that if you do work, um, if you do a job where you're working online, you're working every day, like you're logging in every day. Wi-Fi, very important. We lived somewhere where we had it, but it just wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't great, so we had to. We still had to buy um, another Paper package, additional. right? So that we could, because basically the Wi-Fi that came with the apartment, we were sharing with the whole building, right. and it just wasn't sufficient. So, um, and if that's if that's your bread and butter, you depend on that, then you have to have it. So um, that, and then how long you're going to be somewhere? If you really do have to sit and log in every day to something, to a job, to make money, you may not be able to to bounce around. And um, I, I definitely have learned that lesson working online is that it helps if you have somewhere you can be for a while to just get your business together, you know, just get your business. So that's because a lot of moving around sometimes can make that difficult. So um, thinking about that, too. And comfortable furniture. Okay. You got to have somewhere nice to sit for eight, nine hours if you're working online. Right. And if you're teaching online, you got to have uh, an office space. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. So you can get a studio, one room, but you need a desk. Mm -hmm. And then you may not have one in your room. You may have to go buy that. So there's added expense and things like that. There's there's just little expenses that kept adding up uh, along our journey. And we we cook at, a lot at home, so we have to buy pots and pans and things like that. Even though things are supplied, we still want extras. Um, just because it's three people and we're cooking different things. We're not just eating rice every day. So, next thing is visas, and we're getting real long-winded here. So, next thing is visas. Uh, 30, 60, 90 a year, six months. You need to look in, I'm not going to really get into that, though, because it's really up to you to do your research on which visa is going to work for you if you're planning on being in that country, whether you're going to be working there locally or being a digital nomad. You still have to meet the visa requirements, and you still have to apply and pay, depending on the country. A lot of countries, the first 90 days is free, so that means you got to get out of there after that 90 days. Uh, some, some places you can pay and stay for a year, so factor that into your budget. And if you got to get out of there in 90 days, that means you got to pay for a plane ticket to go somewhere else. Be out. Money. That's why that $1,000 that people mentioned ain't going to work. Ain't going to work. Don't get over there and get stuck how your mom have to um, pay you to get back home. And have a good credit card if you can get one. Have a good credit card. As an emergency. Oh, that's true. The whole card situation and using cards at different ATMs. It's that's not going to work. So, yeah, that's I always recommend having at least two different bank accounts with two different um, debit cards or yeah. credit cards attached to them. Um, and then I have a PayPal account, too. PayPal tends to actually work a lot of places. Um, and make sure you notify your banks that you're traveling and things of that nature. And make sure that your cards are not expiring next month if you're leaving. You know, give it a couple of years. Make sure they're at least two to three years good. Because you may have to get one mailed to you, and that's going to take time. And then you don't have no money. Because right. they will get shut down, be a bit. They will get shut down. All right, and then housing. We talked about that in, in money. Yeah. In the sense that, um, be realistic. If you want to live Western, it's going to cost you to live Western. Um, don't get fooled by the blogs who say that you can live in Southeast Asia. And again, we're using Southeast Asia reference point because that's where we've been. Uh, don't get confused by the blogs who say that you can live here for 200, 300. You can. If you want to live in a room. Right. That is just a room with a hard bed. Yep. No bathroom in it. Maybe a bathroom. Let me not lie. Say you, can. you may have a bathroom. You're not going to have a kitchen. You're going to have a hot plate. And you're going to be with the local. And that goes back to our other video on expat bubbles, so definitely check that out. 
But the per- the one that she said to get out of the expat bubble, but she right. said, but don't live there. No, I'm just saying, no, if you're going to do outside. that, be realistic. Don't think you're going to get this great Western looking apartment right. for 200 bucks a month. You're not. But if you're comfortable in a studio apartment mm. that isn't really a studio because it may not have a kitchen, it may have a kitchen, it may not, then yeah, fine. Go for it. Be happy. You know? Um, then you got to add costs of eating food every day, eating out every day, because that will add up. Because again, you're still in that expat bubble and you're not used to whatever cuisine, the local cuisine, yet. And, and since we're talking about food, I'm going to throw this in there real quick. And Amber, please feel free to jump in at any point. Um, dollar noodles just ain't good every day. Please do not believe those people who say, oh my God, I've made it here and food is cheap. It's a dollar a day. I just eat noodles and broth. Boo. How long do you really think you could eat instant noodles? And chicken soup. Some people can though. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the advocate of the other side of this because she I think eat like that at all. I don't, but you so can. Happy. But you can. Like if you're not a picky eater, and and some people aren't. If you're not a picky eater, um, and you just and you like to try different things, and you don't mind, you know, having a little stomach um issues because of it. You'll be fine. You'll be good. There's cheap food everywhere. It yeah, is there's there. cheap food. It is is it gonna be good food? Or is it just cheap? Once again, if you're not a picky eater, but if you are, then don't play. Don't trip. And, and, and increase pay more. your food budget. Don't That's trip. what I'm saying is increase your food budget. Right. Everybody always says it's really cheap to eat over. It can be cheap. I'm not saying it's not. It's cheaper than the United States, but it ain't uh, a quarter. Okay? Just don't come over here tomorrow. I got five cents and I'm going to eat well. You're not. No, true. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Next thing up we had was travel. I mean, you're over here. It's going to cost you money to travel. Amber wants to go to Hoi An and um, go out to see the water. What's it name? Halong Bay. Halong Bay. It's going to cost. Whether you live or not, <laughs> touristy stuff costs money. Yeah. Um, and just walking around the streets costs money. It's just like anywhere else in the world, you know. So just you factor in travel, and then if you're doing the visas and you're not working local, you're digital, that means you're probably having to leave every 90 days, every 60 days. Um, keep you some money aside um, for travel costs. Planes, trains, whatever it costs to get you back home. I always have an emergency fund. Uh, corona, you should have taught everybody that. Um, to have your emergency fund as much as you possibly can to cover at least one ticket one way back home, just in case. I mean, unless this is going to be your home, then, you know, which is fine, because we didn't leave. Um, people ask, why didn't we? But we actually thought it made more sense to stay here. Some people did leave, and it cost yeah. them a pretty penny to leave. So just keep your, um, keep some money aside. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people left but we just we were looking at what the costs were going to be and it just it didn't make sense it just did not make sense to do that um and i don't regret that decision i think we made the best decision um so yeah but still we have to have money for when we do decide to go so we have that and it wasn't even cost i think it was health wise too what why would we leave a place that was handling everything better to go to a place that was handling everything worse Mm -hmm. And then we'd have to pay an exorbitant amount of money on top of that. Plus, we'd have to um, make it when we get there. Right. Versus here, we had a home, and we were fine. Mm-hmm. So, yep. So, and then we're going to wrap all this up with costs. Be realistic, people. Ignore those blogs. Don't say ignore. Factor them in as to who's writing those blogs that you're reading that says Southeast Asia is the land of cheap it's not as cheap as people say it is. It's relatively inexpensive, though. And we love it. But don't get over here thinking you can make a living. You can you can survive on two, three hundred bucks a month. It's just really, truly... I mean, it's possible. It is possible. It's possible. And why you would just, you want to live like that? If you decide that's what you're going to do, then just commit to it. Commit. Because that's basically... You're going to have to. Because right. it's going to be a different type of living. Totally different. Than you're, than you're used to. And that's fine. If you are, if that's what you're looking for, then that's fine. Living, so. baby. Not me. <laughs> not my cup of tea. But, 
be be realistic. Add all these things up. It's it's not cheap to move overseas to relocate your entire life, um, but it can be done easily. A lot of people do it every day. I hope this doesn't deter you from doing. What we're saying to you though is look at everything. Make sure you got as many bases covered as you possibly can before you take that leap. Uh, and then I always have some extras al along because there's going to be things you just never even thought about. They're going to hit you. Um, visa costs when we hit Cambodia, pricey. Apartment, first month down. Uh, and then the deposit, deposit right. pricey. Um, but, you know, we, we, we had a great apartment for 600 bucks a month. You know? Yeah. Um, so I can, we can't truly complain. But, you know, those are things yeah. that you got to have money for. So you, if you only, you get on a plane with a thousand dollars, I promise you, within a week of arriving, that thousand dollars is gonna probably be down to two hundred, just so you can function, and things of that nature. So live within your means, save up some funds, get a credit card, get a couple credit cards, get a debit card, uh, plan well, do as much research as you can, join all the travel groups that you can, all the expat groups that you yep. can. Read, research, watch some videos, follow some folks who are on the journey that you're attempting to go on, and then do it. Stay prayed up. Yeah. Because that's what you do. <laughs> that helps. You know? Just do it, though. We, yeah. We want to tell you to do it. I mean, really, truly, fly. Uh, if not this lifetime, when? That's right. Yeah. So, anyway, that's our conversation for today. First steps for moving abroad. As an expat from the U.S., expat immigrant, that's a whole nother video too. So, anyway, I am Kat. I'm Amber. And we are Wondering Soup. As always, like, follow, share, comment. Uh, and again, follow us on our journey as we travel through Southeast Asia and the world. Black, LGBTQI, with the kid. We out here. We doing it. Tars. See, I did it this way. Because <laughs> I knew she was. All right. <laughs> Peace and love, y'all. Right. See you next video. Bye, y'all.